During vanilla World of Warcraft was the only time when we had faction specific classes and it was such a huge thematic draw for players making that ever important decision of Alliance versus Horde. Whilst the Alliance received a light wielding warriors in the Paladin, the Horde got powerful elemental casters and spiritual leaders in the Shaman. Whether you wanted to global someone in PvP with elemental mastery, roll a dice each melee swing with wind fury, or be a powerful healer with tons of utility, the Shaman answered at all of those calls. Today we take a look at the Shaman from a different angle though, through the lens of the Hardcore Challenge, which has much more focus on the leveling rather than the end game. As always we've plenty to cover here, so let's check out the Shaman in Hardcore Classic WoW. So is the Shaman a good pick for a player taking on the Hardcore Challenge? Is this class new player friendly? Well I think the best way to put it is that they start out as one of the most powerful classes in the game during the early levels and then feel as though they fall off quite hard during the latter part of your leveling journey. As per the death log add-on, which tracks deaths in hardcore to put out data, the shaman shows some really interesting stats. First of all, they are the least played class, which is not surprising considering their faction specific. And as of this snapshot on June 9th, they counted for only 2.3% of total deaths tracked. What stands out though is how well the shaman does early game. They have the best chance of hitting level 10, by an absolute mile, with about 72.6% of players making it to that benchmark. The next class in order is the Mage, and they're around 65%. Shaman also has the highest average level of 14.6% meaning Shaman players are getting furthest in the Hardcore Challenge before making some kind of fatal error. But you can see as levels progress, things start to go downhill. By level 20, their stats have become a lot more middle of the pack, and by level 30, they are well below average. So I guess in a way they are new player friendly if they have the highest average level possible, but they're also more likely than most to fail the challenge during the latter parts of the game. As to why they start strong and fall off later, that's something we'll be answering during other parts of this video. So how does the Shaman perform solo questing? Reasonably well, I would say. With a true hybrid toolkit of melee, spellcasting, self heals and totems, Shaman often have the tools to take down challenges which other classes may find difficult. Difficult. It just depends whether their mana bar can hold up long enough to actually finish the job. Moving from enemy to enemy in regular questing can be quite fast as long as you are playing in an efficient manner and making the most of your melee attacks. You'll also find early game with instant cast shocks and weapon imbues that you power through enemies way faster than most classes will too. Shaman has to be one of the most fun classes to start off on the hardcore challenge with. Against elite quests, performance may vary a bit more. The good side is with those self heals and the ability to kite forever with frost shock, Shaman has the tools to overcome harder quests. The problem is you're going to be reliant on your melee attacks to do a good portion of your damage, and attacking a melee means you're going to be trading hits, and even if you're going with a one-hander and a shield, that's going to hurt. As you progress in levels, I think you start to notice Shaman falling off in damage somewhat. I feel as though it happens around some time between levels 35 to 40. Of course, Wind Fury is a great buff to get hold of at level 30 and so much fun to play with, especially if you manage to get a slow two-handed weapon, but it's just so RNG. NG heavy. The bonus attacks can still be dodged or parried, and often it's just overkilling mobs by a huge amount. The other option for the melee focus shaman around this level is a one-hander in a shield though, but your searing totem, lightning shield and shocks have to play a decent part in your damage output instead. Perhaps then there is a level where it's time to move away from enhancement, and maybe even play elemental. Maybe, we'll have to talk about that in talents. Grouping up is where the shaman can truly shine, and the big bonus that they provide our totems, earth, fire, water and wind. These group wide buffs provide a whole host of different benefits, from mana per 5, health per 5, resistances, to spells, reducing damage taken, dealing damage, adding the wind fury effect to your party members main handed weapons and a lot more. If you're playing a melee class on the horde, seeing a shaman join the party is pretty much the best feeling you can have in the game I think. The shaman is also one of the most flexible classes in the game during group based content. Well ok, elemental is very questionable early game due to missing a lot of vital talents, but you can DPS as enhancement just fine, you can put on a bunch of intellect gear and fulfill a healer role, and you can absolutely tank. 
I know people meme enhanced tank and treat it like it's not viable because of how it performs the 10 game, but during leveling dungeons, especially those lower level dungeons, it's actually very good. Enhancement might not have taunt as warriors or druids do, but earth shock and rock bite to weapon both have hefty threat modifiers attached to them, which will make it difficult to pull a mob off a shaman once they've engaged it. Stoneclaw into fire nova can generate a ton of AoE threat if the nova's able to go off, shamans can wear a shield of course, and base align they take a few survivability focused talents in the enhancement tree anyway. Definitely don't underestimate the shaman tanks in early to mid game dungeons, they'll work just fine. On to survivability then, a topic where we have a bunch to say. So shamans start strong and fall off, and their ability to survive a situation going south is a big contributor to that. Simply put, despite having the largest toolkit of abilities in the entire game, not too many of them are really overpowered when it comes to keeping you alive live. First up, shamans have some really key aspects of gameplay locked behind talent points. In baseline, you get Ghost Wolf at level 20, which increases movement speed by 40% outdoors. The problem? It's a 3 second cast, and even if there's just one enemy hitting you with spell knockback being a thing, it's going to be a struggle to get off a 3 second cast if you actually need to run away. With 7 points in the enhancement tree, you can get it down to a 1 second cast, which is fine, you can fit that in between most enemies swing timer. Most people will be enhancement anyways, but if you did want to play a different spec, it feels like a near non-optional 7 talent point investment on a hardcore character. Another rather vital defensive tool which you don't get for a very long time, and you don't get at all if you don't go enhancement, is the ability to parry. For some reason you have to be level 30 before you can have the talent point to invest in the ability to parry. Every single other class that can parry learns it from their trainer by level 10. Shaman, enhancement only, you need level 30, and you need a talent point. The ability to parry is a defensive tool you should not overlook as well. Not only does it entirely stop an enemy attack, but it also allows you to strike them back faster thanks to parry haste. The fact that you don't get this to level 30 is just strange to be honest. Oh and also you're wearing leather armor until level 40, that's just another way you're missing out on some vital passive mitigation. For a class wearing leather, you don't have the avoidance or CC of a rogue or the mobility and defensive tools of a druid, you're kinda just standing there and getting hit in the face for a very long time. Perhaps the biggest kick for shaman survivability are actually the totems. So you'd think totems are only ever a positive buff for your character or your group, until you remember how totems work in classic. Once you put a totem down, you cannot remove it unless it times out, or you replace it with another totem from the same element. There's no totemic recall to quickly remove them like there is in TBC, there's no totem bar to place several at once like there is in Wrath, you put down one totem, and that is it. And this can be very problematic. Moments such as where you have two totems down, there's a patrol coming, and you don't have the mana to replace them, so it ends up pulling the patrol, and then you don't have the health to fight, so you have to try and run away, or the dreaded totem pull during a dungeon group. Just one errant totem could end up pulling mobs that spawn behind you, or catch a patrol you didn't expect. I remember during Classic at some point, there was a macro that you could use to remove totems, and Blizzard ended up breaking it because hashtag no changes. So yeah, gotta be really careful with your totems, as great as they can be, they can absolutely cause a lot of problems. But the shaman does have quite a few tools at their disposal to survive difficult situations. They have earth shock, which both deals damage and can interrupt enemy spellcasting for a short duration. Frost shock can be used defensively to kite or control enemies indefinitely. Stone claw totem taunts nearby enemies and absorbs a minor amount of damage, good for when you pull multiple mobs by accident. It will also frequently stun enemies which attack it. Fire totem themselves can be used as a small defensive tool. When you summon Fire Nova, for example, it instantly generates a large amount of threat to nearby enemies. It's a very minor thing, but it could distract an enemy just long enough for you to get away. Grounding Totem alongside Earthshock can make it difficult for enemies to land successful casts on Shaman at all. You also have Purge, which can remove enemy magical effects very efficiently. And of course you have Healing Wave, your lesser Healing Wave, all of those things. All in all, Shamans do have tools to survive tough encounters. There's just nothing that stands out as a huge button which will nearly guaranteed save you, such as Ice Block or Feign Death. The Shaman is definitely a class where, as you hit the higher levels, you need to start playing more and more carefully. On to speed though, is this class fast to level? Well, the Shaman may not have the same fast-paced leveling speed as some other classes, 
but they have several advantages that can contribute towards efficient leveling. They can fulfill multiple roles as a healer, DPS, or even a tank, and versatility is a great thing during leveling and allows you to see the full toolkit the shaman has to offer. You also get to be more than just a healer, which is often the experience at endgame. Though the shaman starts off at a fairly rapid pace, they do tend to fall off as you get to the higher levels, leaving them somewhere in the middle of the pack when it comes to leveling speed. On to talents then, what kind of build are we looking at for the shaman? So I don't think it's any secret, but people tend to go enhancement at least during the early game on the shaman. But if you did want to play elemental, is that really a thing and can it work? Well, to be honest, Elemental, until you hit quite a high level, is kind of just enhancement, but worse. Simply put, you're missing some really vital talents for a, such a long time. Here's a talent tree so I can show you what I mean. The first problem is having to go into the enhancement tree early game to pick up Improved Ghost Wolf to make it somewhat useful. Second is the fact that the talent to reduce the cast time on your Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning cannot be maxed out until as early as level 39. Every single other spellcaster in the game gets their cast speed reduction talents very early on because I mean it's kind of essential to playing a caster but apparently not for the elemental shaman. I mean if you do want to cast three second lightning bolts until an early level 40 you do you but it's not going to be for everyone. You also don't have a good way to avoid spell knockback. Your talent eye of the storm has a 100% chance to make you immune to spell knockback after being hit by a physical crit for a few seconds. This is great in pvp. In PvE, it's just not very useful. Ranged attacks can't crit in PvE, and melee attacks critting is just totally random. Also, you're probably going to be wearing cloth because you're going to be needing the intellect and, well, you know, classic itemization. Shamans are just not mana efficient in general, and it feels as though they were meant to be meleeing whatever spec you're playing instead of being a pure spellcaster. So the combination of probably having to wear cloth armor, 3 second lightning bolts and no spell knockback prevention are what make elemental just not very good until you hit around level 40. I think once you do have these talents unlocked they do start improving noticeably. They're still not super mana efficient but your damage output is extremely bursty which makes elemental start to feel really satisfying to play. And even if I did want to go elemental on my shaman I would still start off as enhancement, save gear that would fit it in the bank and respec around level 40 or so. But most people will be going enhanced so we've already talked about some of the benefits. You get improved Ghost Wolf, you get Parry, and beyond that you get to lean into the hybrid nature of Shaman to a much greater degree by combining both melee attacks, shocks, and totems to deal damage. Also you open up the opportunity to tank much more efficiently should you find yourself in that situation. You can also learn the ability to equip two-handed weapons if you manage to find a good one out in the open world or as a drop from a dungeon. Midway through the talent tree you also get Flurry, causing your crits to increase your attack speed and adding a nice extra bit of damage onto your auto attacks. The big ability right at the bottom of the tree is Storm Strike, instantly attacking and causing the next two sources of nature damage to do an additional 20% damage. The best use you'll get out of this will be for an earth shock. In group content this extra damage often gets used up by some random item procs or attacks from other players that deal nature damage. The most fun thing about enhancement to me though has to be the moment when you first get access to Wind Fury after doing your earth totem quest at level 30. It gives each melee swing a chance to deal two extra attacks with bonus attack power. This is kind of the vanilla enhancement shaman's defining ability. It's definitely a lot of fun but super high variance. Personally I got a little tired of wind fury RNG by the higher levels but it's well worth using at least for a while or just in general if you manage to find a really good two-handed weapon. Blowing up a mob in one single hit will just never not be fun. After spending points and getting storm strike in the enhancement tree it's kind of up to you where you want to go next. You can go into elemental, putting points into improving the damage of your fire totems, as well as picking up elemental focus and elemental devastation. As nice as these talents are adding all that crit synergy, it really doesn't do much for the sorry state of the enhancement shaman's already scarce mana bar. I would usually instead go into restoration for a number of reasons. You get a talent that gives bonus hit chance, healing knockback prevention, and it allows for more opportunity in general to flex into a healer role for later game dungeons. Above all, I'd try and find a shaman playstyle which you like. It boils down to one hander plus a shield, two 
one-hander or elemental. Each have their own strengths and weaknesses and are quite different from one another, so try them out and see what works for you. Next, abilities. So the ones highlighted in green are level wherever possible, yellow is optional or don't level fully, and red is avoid. If you can say one thing about the shaman, it's that they have by far the most abilities in the game, and that's even before you get into down ranking and including more niche use totems. All the same, whether you're playing elemental, enhancement, or anything in between, there's quite a few abilities that will always find their use, such as healing wave, lesser healing wave, lightning bolt, and chain lightning. Totem wise, the majority of them are pretty useful, and I'd level up ones including searing, stone skin, mana spring, poison or disease cleansing, stone claw, grounding, earth bind, and so on. All of these are worth leveling up. The more optional totems are the resistance ones, wind wall, and sentry. Weapon imbue wise, I usually stick to wind fury once I have it, even if I'm playing elemental. As far as I know, rock biter and flame tongue are quite similar damage wise over a long period of time, so I just pick one and stick with it. The only possible avoids for the shaman are reincarnation and ancestral spirits. Resurrecting, not terribly good on hardcore. Weapon progression is a funny thing to cover on the shaman. More so than other classes, you can lean into playing the drops you get across several different playstyles, rather than there just being one set weapon path being the best without much discussion. All the same, if there were quests I would go out of my way to do, I can think of three of them and they are all in dungeons. Your first big weapon upgrade on the shaman will near enough always be the Crescent Staff from the quest to Leaders of the Fang. This staff has very good stats for the shaman as well as a decent attack speed and this weapon could easily take you from the early level 20s into the 30s, it really is that good. It can be nice to pick up a good shield on the shaman even if you're not always using it. The quest of Vengeful Fate which involves defeating the last boss of Razorfen Krull gives just that. Also the last boss can drop the pronged reaver and as long as there isn't a warrior in a group or a hunter who thinks they need a strength weapon you will always get this on your shaman. Even if you just get the shield off of this quest it's nice to have but if you win the axe and then go turn in the quest for the shield it's a massive upgrade over the crescent staff and you'll find this combo useful for a very long time. At a higher level it's worth getting the Resurgence Rod from the quest Corruption of Earth and Seed, which involves defeating Princess Theradras in Maradon. It's okay from a caster point of view giving 8 mana per 5, but mainly of interest if you want to see some big Wind Fury crits. It's very slow, 3.8 speed gives it high top end damage, making it a weapon that can see you through towards endgame. Finally let's cover some macros and add-ons. Earthshock's Interrupt is the same at max rank compared to rank 1, so having rank 1 just for a low cost interrupt is very useful. I've also added a stop cast macro and a mouse over function 2 so it goes off right away. One button buffing is nice on the shaman, you're going to be pressing lightning shield a lot and weapon imbues for some reason only last 5 minutes. Other than that, try and fit as many of your many many different totems somewhere on your bar where they're easy to remember. In terms of add-ons for the shaman, there's only one specific thing I tend to find helpful and that's getting a reminder via a weak aura or an add-on for my weapon imbues. Having them fall off for 5 minutes and thinking to yourself, wow I'm getting unlucky with wind fury today is all too real of a thing. And that for me is the shaman in hardcore wow. It's a class that proves very versatile across different roles, starts off super strong and falls off a little towards late game. Anyways, what do you reckon about this shaman in hardcore WoW? Is it something that you've given a try and did you find it difficult at all as it appears that many people have? Let me know down below and as always thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.